Hello, good afternoon, everyone. This is Dari on World Streams Radio. Thank you to our listeners from all around the world for joining us. To learn more about World Streams Radio, visit our website, worldstreams.org. You can also find us now on Facebook at facebook.com slash worldstreams. Our guest today is coming to us from Marrakesh, Morocco, Dr. Lassen Haddad. For the past 18 years, Dr. Haddad has worked as a researcher and international consultant in many areas of international development, such as institutional development, policy change, human development, and democracy and governance. Dr. Haddad has taught at several universities in the U.S., Europe, Morocco, and the Middle East. He speaks five languages and has written numerous academic articles and also written or co-edited five books on the humanities, social sciences, management, development, and cultural studies. Dr. Haddad also writes editorial opinions for various news publications in Arabic, French, and English, and he's a frequent guest on Moroccan as well as international TV channels. Hello, Saeed. Hello and welcome, Dr. Haddad. It's a pleasure to have you with us on World Streams today. Well, hello, Dari, and good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, everyone, to all our listeners from around the world, and Mr. Um, and Ms. Um, Saeed, uh, Dr. Haddad, thank you for being with us this afternoon. No problem. Hello. Um, yeah, Dr. Haddad, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your orga organization, MSI? Well, MSI is an international uh, development uh, company that was founded in 1981. Mm -hmm. uh, it's based in uh, D.C., uh, Washington, D.C., but it's... Uh, has been so far like uh, development work in democracy and governance, in uh, human development, in uh, stabilization and recovery for countries which have been ravaged by wars or civil wars. Uh, and so far, we like in uh, something like 100 countries around the world. We have done something like 3,000 consultations running from short-term uh, uh, technical assistance to long-term projects. Well, the word democracy has been very widely used recently, especially in North Africa and the Middle East. Uh, it, from your uh, experience, uh, where do, what, do you, what do you think has started these movements in North Africa and the Middle East? Well, I think there is a combination of different things that has started that. I think one of them is that uh, the lack of freedom and the fact that a lot of people have felt that they they have been uh, left out from all the movements towards like human rights and democracy in so many countries. I think also the second one is like there is a youth bulge, and these are young societies with like a lot of youth on their hands, but uh, it doesn't look like they have a bright future in front of them. And it, there is a huge problem with unemployment and uh, marginalization of these people. I think the third one is like there are like elites that have probably monopolized like political action in these countries, and a lot of the people felt that they have been disenfranchised from the system in Tunisia, in, in Libya, in Egypt, and other places, in Syria, uh, in Yemen, and therefore, I mean, like the the. They, I think they were waiting only for moments like these to manifest their anger and their protest uh, against the political system that does not serve them, uh, I mean, like economically and socially, but also it's a system that disenfranchises them and don't, uh, doesn't make of them citizens that are contributing uh, to their own future and that of their countries. Well, it appears that all these countries have a common de denominator. They want change. Let's talk more specifically, but specifically, some countries are different. At least this is what the media is talking about. Let's do some comparisons, for example, between Tunisia and Egypt, and then we'll get to Morocco. Okay. Um, I, I think Tunisia, for one moment, the option or the approach for Tunisia was to uh, do some sort of, uh, of barter 
between, uh, I mean, like political freedom and economic development. I think for one moment, the regime in Tunisia was, was telling its people, let's have economic development, let's have jobs, let's have investment. And, but on the other hand, I mean, I don't think and we need to build like some sort of consensus and that consensus means like there is like Muslim of human rights, there is not much political freedom. So in a sense, there is a give and take in this kind of situation. We'll give you I mean, like economic development and jobs, and you forgive, I mean, you forgive or you give up on your political rights and human rights. And for one moment, it was working in Tunisia mm-hmm. until like uh, a clan related to the president's wife be- began, I mean, like to be a fascist kind of, of, uh, of clan and then wanted to get into not only politics but also economics and they were trying to control the whole sector of economics and, and, and international change and that began to actually like asphyxiate not only the Tunisian economy but also the middle class that was a very important support to the model that the Tunisian government, Tunisian regime was, was trying to, to sell. At that moment, then, the, 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 the frustration grew bigger. It's no longer a frustration among the youth, but it's also a frustration among the middle class and also in the private sector. So there was a huge consensus that the model is no longer working and that it has reached its end, and that it needed only that event in Sidi Bouzid, which is like that, 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 that young man like burning himself for the whole country to actually like, uh, I mean, like burn and to topple the government in Tunisia. So I think that the Tunisian model worked for a little bit, but afterwards then it became, it became like ineffective and created a revolution on its own. If, if we move to, Algier, to, to, to Egypt, I think Egypt is a different kind of story. Egypt has, has a huge demography. I mean, like it's about 80 million people. And Egypt's economy is not as diversified as that of Tunisia. And also, it does not have like a big middle class. So what is happening in, in Egypt is like the, 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 they were living under some sort of political system that is provisional since 1981, and it has been like that for a long time. At the same time, that there are like very serious problems with unemployment, and there is also an elite that grew up since the late 70s, and this, this is the elite that came with what was called the openness then. And openness meant a lot of people became rich because of the openness of the regime in the, in the late 70s. And these are the same people who became afterwards members of parliament and became like people who really controlled the economic sphere and the political sphere. These people not only controlled those, but in the late elections, they did not let the opposition actually win anything. So like the nationalist, the progressive, and also the Muslim Brothers did not win any seats. And that was like probably the last straw that broke the camel's back in the sense that people not only were frustrated with the regime, but they thought that it's actually like it was a complete takeover of the whole state by a specific kind of party and a specific kind of elite, while like millions and millions of people were disenfranchised, were unemployed, were marginalized and all of that. And that created like like what 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 happened, what we saw with our own eyes. Right. You've uh, used the word uh, the word middle class to refer to the changes that have been brought up by the economic uh, economic reforms in Tunisia. Uh, uh, perhaps as a misnomer, uh, in the case of Egypt, probably the middle class is what acted as a buffer that has not really created chaos in that country. As opposed to Tunisia, the lack of middle class perhaps is what created the uh, the uh, very much the overthrow of the of the Ben Ali regime. Uh, was there really a middle class in Tunisia? I, I think that what what happens in Tunisia is that the 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 middle class was in formation over the last uh, I mean like 20 years or so in the sense that there is like an educated elite, uh, uh, I mean an, elite, an educated like part, group of society, and those who are getting into modern sectors of society like IT, a lot of exchange with, with Europe, there is also like tourism and all of that. So that has meant like there's a lot of startups 
And at the moment, I mean, Tunisia was the model for the Middle East and so far as economic development was concerned. And uh, I think that was, that, 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 that meant that there was a stability for the regime for a while because a lot of people who saw the rise of Islamism in the 80s now see that the regime was actually not only like preventing Islamism from coming back, but also providing some sort of economic uh, opportunities for a lot of people to get jobs. Uh, that's what I meant by the middle class and what I meant by, by, okay. by that alliance that was formed around the regime. I think what happened in, in, in Tunisia exactly is a lot of people were scared by the Islamist uprising in the late 80s. I think well, what, that the uh -huh. Go ahead. They formed an alliance around the regime, and that alliance comprised women because the women like, saw in the regime like a liberator for those women. And there was also the middle class that was indicated and that benefited from a little bit of the economic boom that happened in Tunisia, and also the private sector that saw a lot of, of its business grow during the 90s. That kind of alliance was broken by the clan that was surrounded by Ali's wife, because that's like tens of, of people who actually tried to control all the businesses as they see the economy grew like really richer and then and very rich and sometimes obscenely rich and that was what made like that alliance break in the sense that it's no longer all of that alliance to support of the regime but the private sector the classification people saw in that as some sort of like reneging on the alliance that was formed and therefore they were, it was easy for them like to turn to the other side and revolt against it.